Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good day, class. And uh, you know, um, today's our second week, um, day two. And uh, yeah, we're making progress. And uh, again, we are going deep, deep into the stuff, you know, which is getting more interesting. At the same time, uh, some people we we be like, oh my god, what's all this? So, but um, yeah, these are you know real stuff now that we'll be working on from now. You know, I'll be uh, we'll be working on you know like a project, project. So um, welcome again. And uh, today, you know, this will be our agenda. We'll be uh, just going through what we did last um, last class. That's on Tuesday. Um, then um, we go into continuous integration. I think I may Can that person please mute their mic? Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, we'll be uh, doing uh, continuous integration, uh, continuous delivery. You know, I'm sure most cloud job you see out there, you you win like 99%, 98% you see I see this very, very important, you know. Uh, so we are going to see, you know, uh, what CICD is all about, uh, the pipeline. Uh, we're going to see some continuous integration tools that we have out there. Uh, then uh, for this class, we're just going to use Jenkins for continuous integration. It doesn't mean Jenkins is the only thing we are, you know, there are other tools that will be very uh, new to uh, some of us, but uh, for continuous integration tool, um, uh, we're going to, to use Jenkins because it's the most common type of um, common tools used for continuous integration. There are other ones as well, which I'm just going to mention. So but you don't, good news is you don't need to know all the continuous integration tools. Just know one, then you are good. Nobody will ask you to, to learn Jenkins, to learn Bamboo, to learn um, GitLab and some other ones. So once you are good at one, then then of course the last part will be lab, lab and lab. So again, this is a recap from last week. Last week we talked about version control system Git. You know um, what they do. You know how it helps to manage code. You know uh, to to maintain repository and stuff like that. And also we talk about some Git command, some common ones like Git clone which is used to clone your repository to like download or, you know, get a copy of your uh, remote repository to your local machine, like your computer. You know, uh, we talk about Git add, we talk about Git push, Git commit, um, Git branch and some other, um, second, I don't care about members of the, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll be sorry about that, Mr. Suja. We didn't see you last class, so I know you. Yeah, I hope, I hope you. I hope you. You're able to check out the videos of what we did in class last week. Well, I say I'll just try to check it real weekend. Oh, I will check it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's part of what I said earlier that you know we should try and you know just create that time from our busy schedule, and uh, you know it's. Uh, yeah, I will try to cover up our weekend, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, because this Git is very important. You know, we'll be going forward, all our code will be in Git. You know, everybody will, uh, can, some, can uh, I think someone, Mike, is uh, on mute. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so um, going forward, you know, uh, it's, we'll be using Git a lot. So, you know, it's important we get familiar with it, you know, as well with the basic command push code, you know, uh, those are what we did last week. We create, we generated like a small script, then we push it to Git, uh, to our Git repository, which we saw it there. Then we talk about some basic scripting, which for some reason, my small scripts was um, was not working as I wanted. So today I will be doing some scripting as well. Then we see, I think I put together uh, a data script this time. So um, then continuous integration as well. And then labs, those are what we cover la in last class. So um, basically these are the, these are just the overview. Then again, these are some of the command that we mentioned, you know, git init, git clone, git add, 
uh, git commit, pull, push, branch, checkout, and stuff like that. And uh, but mostly the one we'll be using will be like git clone, add, git commit, git pull, git push. You know, uh, those are some of the ones we'll be using mostly most of the time. Since we are not doing branching like that, you know, so we likely not going to use git branch or git uh, checkout. So, um, yep. So introduction to CI, CD, you know, again, and I'm sure, you know, many of you will have, so if you check any job out there, you know, it's like, it's the center of um, DevOps practice and even cloud too, you know, um, they call it CI, CD, you know, and it basically just means continuous integration, continuous delivery, or in some cases, continuous integration, continuous deployment. So um, don't worry, we, we, we see the difference between uh, continuous delivery and continuous deployment, you know, uh, in the few, in few slides from now. So but basically what uh, CICD pipeline is, is a series of steps that must be performed in order to deliver a new version of software. So um, to deliver a software from writing the code, you know, they are um, from the point where developer are writing the code, to the point where you see the application maybe on the on the mobile app or maybe on the website also there are a lot of stages in between you know you don't you know it's not just like the what we did in the first class just type something and you see it up there you know it's more than that you know they will write the code maybe 500 lines 1000 lines or stuff like that you know there are things they will do and that's what this thing you are seeing here it's all about the uh, this like uh, infinity sign, which is like uh, it, you know. So basically they write the code, which is the first stage. They build it. You see the arrow going to be, okay, plan. Let's go to plan. Plan is just like, okay, what are we doing? You know, just normal planning. Planning before you start a project, which is the first one from this blue side now, you know. Um, then they write the code, developer write the code, you know, type in, write the code, put it in a GitHub. You know, just like we explained last week, you know, um, they write the code, put it in the GitHub. So what happened after they put it in the Git, Git when they write all the code, they build it. Building is like um, packaging the code together, like making it, um, because the code actually, they, they have something they call dependencies that the code have to use before they can run the way they're supposed to run. You know, it should not just be pure test, there are some, other things that has to come with the code before they can work, they call them dependency. They are like some other file that they have to add with it, some other configuration, different things. So they, they have to build it. So they build it, they package it. So if they package it, that's when you see like um, what they call um, artifacts. Uh, sometimes uh, it could be .jar, .gar, you know, maybe it's a Java application, it could be you will see that thing we end with dot J A R. Then you see some we end with dot W, which is W A R. So those are like web um, Java application. Then in, in Windows, you see some of those like e dot E X E or whatever. Those are kind of like you know they've already compiled that code, they package it, they've done everything. That's when when you see your application, you download it on your Windows computer or this thing, you see it end with .exe. It's like they, it's like they zip it together. Like they put so many, just like when you zip stuff, you know, you, you have like a test file, you have other file, then you zip them, them together. They become like a, just one bundle of stuff. So code are always like that. When they write it, they write it in a normal writing, testing in the test format and stuff like that. Then, you know, when they do the build, there they are, they are some tools they use for the building, which we're also going to talk about. You know, we're only going to use Maven in this class. There are a lot of building tools out there, depending on the language. They are this thing. Docker is one of them for building image, you know, but you have to build that code that you write and you build it with some dependencies. So, you know, after the code, they build it. After they build, they test it you know, before they release it, before it gets to the public or whatever they want to do with it. And these are the stages, you know, here it says that after test, they will release it, then they will deploy, operate, monitor, then it continues like that. And these are CI, CD. You know, CI is like this part alone, the blue side, 
then continuous delivery is like the yellow part. So delivery is just, you know, putting it out. You know, after, after they plan it, they write the code, they build it, you know, there are still a lot of stages in between, depending on the company, you know, this test can be like three different testing stages on its own, you know, because they have to test everything that's working very well, you know. So, and, uh, you know, after they do that, you know, they will now release it, then they can release it into different environment. You know, in real world, we used to have what they call environment, like um, software environment, you know, some of them are like, um, like um, a development environment, uh, staging environment, uh, production environment, you know, different kind of, those are not really important in this context now. But, uh, you know, just get the concept of the CICD, you know, it's just like continuous integration, continuous delivery, you know, they keep, just like I explained last week, continuous integration is when the developer keep um, pushing their code into GitHub and this action, all this action automatically. So as a DevOps engineer, these are like pipeline that you have to build to make sure that developer will only have to write code. You, you will get, you will help them to do the building. So you will build the pipeline, which are those things we do with Jenkins. You know, you build that pipeline to build the code automatically. They don't have to do anything. They just have to write the code and push it to GitHub. Automatically, you will connect maybe like uh, Jenkins with GitHub. Uh, Jenkins, we know that they put a new code there. Jenkins will pick it up, build it with anything you do. Test, do the testing, then release it to wherever you want to put it put the code into, maybe you want to uh, run it on AWS or anywhere. So we do everything and, you know, so again, when we start um, working on all those things, you will understand the concept better. And the second one says that um, continuous integration and continuous delivery embody the culture, a set of operating principles and collection of practices that enable application development team to deliver code changes more frequently and reliably because what happened is that in developer this is where they work in the code session they will only have to be writing their code with devil practice cicd they don't have to worry about other stages you know this will be within the pipeline built already all the stages we are seeing and if you go down here i think this explain it a little bit better you know once they build it here the first stage you know the test you know from the coding section, the code will come here, then you build the code, you test it, you merge it, different name they call it, you know, then you can deploy it automatically, which is continuous delivery, or, you know, you can do it manually, which is um, continuous um, deployment. I think there's a little bit um, of bits, you know, these are basically what pipeline is all about. I will show you pipeline on uh, when we get to Jenkins dashboard, we log into a Jenkins, but you know, this is, you know, in some organization, they can have like seven different stages. You know, they may have build, they may have packaging. After that, they may have test in between. After that, they may have static code. You know, different kind of tests may be in between. Then after that, they may have um, um, deploy to, you know, different kind of stages. You know, most some interview question, they will ask you that, okay, how is your pipeline design? You know, the pipeline in your, um, in, in your company, how, what are the stages? How do you define them? So these are basically the stages, you know, the stage, you know, build, test, deploy, package, you know, merge, whatever they call it. So, you know, there are lots of them, again, depending on organization, some company may not have more than four stages here, or maybe five, some, you know, can be up to like six or seven, you know. One project I worked with recently that I built the pipeline, and uh, Jenkins, I think I can show you guys, you will see all the stages I have there. I have like six different stages there. So from where the code, the, the um, from where they push the code to get up, everything will be triggered automatically. So this is just um, high level of CICD. Then again, the first part of the CICD is CI, which is continuous integration. And uh, this is basically the definition is a development practice where developer integrate code into repository frequently you know again like i said last week you know companies like all those google all those this thing they, they do that like thousands of times a day maybe ten thousand like google or whatever you know that they 
they have to integrate their code every day. So when developer from here, developer put the code, this is a source control, which is like GitHub, you know, then you see all this action triggering, this is build, this is, I don't know what this could be, you know, um, maybe packaging or testing at this stage, you know, you can do some many action here, you know, so the cycle will keep going like that, keep going each time they push the code, you know, it will keep going. They just, they only have to make little changes. Maybe they just change five line, you know, add new line to the code. You know, this action will continue, will be triggered each time, every time this is done. So it's a cycle and they, you know, and this is what continuous integration is. You know, um, again, like you, if you see the third point here, say source control, um, source control version control system is a cross of the CICD. That means it's the center of it. It's very source control, which is Git, GitHub. You know, it could be GitHub or whatever tool you use. But, you know, developer will be putting the code here. And, you know, from here, Jenkins will take over from all these stages and do everything. Jenkins can also deploy it, release it to other places to use the uh, artifact. So today we're going to integrate GitHub with Jenkins. You see how they work together. And, you know, Jenkins can know when there's any change in GitHub, then it will just trigger. And that's the concept of uh, CICD. And they also concept of, um, of um, what's it called, of uh, DevOps as a home. So continuous delivery is the other one, you know, um, continuous delivery is the automation that pulls the application to delivery environment. So just like continuous integration do like the first phase, the second phase is the continuous delivery because that this thing from the continuous integration from this release, it's just going to release something like artifacts, you know, it could be dot .war file. It will be like a file, like a zip file, you know, of, of course it's not going to be a zip file, but you know, just give an example, like a bundle file. That's what this output will look like after it has gone through all these stages, build everything. So it will release that kind of distance. So depending on the environment you want to put the code to, you know, again, they don't just write the code and everything will appear to, to everybody like that. In all organizations, they have different environments. What it means is that like different server that do different things. You know, they may have these servers, they may have 20 server, they will say these servers are development or testing. You know, so this thing can be released to testing environment. They will test it. They will see how the uh, application works, check everything, do some other kind of testing software they will use there, you know, before they now release the production is when it gets to the user. They call it production environment or life environment. You know, some company can call it life. The most company production, but, you know, in most cases, production, you don't want to mess with it. You don't just want your developer to make changes and you go, you release everything to production. That's a disaster, you know, because it can bring down your whole application if there's a problem, you know. So it's a very controlled environment whereby, you know, they will first put all this output, they will put it to another environment, they will play around with it, test it, you know, perform so many things here there to make sure that, you know, it work perfectly before they now do um, a release. So the way they release is the continuous delivery, you know, how it is delivered to the uh, environment, maybe to the test environment, you know, to the um, production environment or whatever. There are different tools they also use for them. So there's this concept, um, you know, in some cases, if you hear CICD, it could mean continuous integration, continuous delivery, or continuous deployment, you know, that D it's always between delivery and deployment. So what happened, what is the, uh, what this diagram is illustrating is that, again, this is, all these stages are automated, they're automatic, you know, and that's what the pipeline is. This is a typical pipeline that you are seeing here. I think this is a bit even more distant. So it's like this, every stage here, you know, you see it's automated and that's what they want. Before develop, they have to do this, they have to write the code. After they write the code, they will do the testing separately. They will build it. You know, they will run all those stuff. But with the uh, with DevOps practice now, you can have a pipeline that will do everything for you from A to Z, from the point where developer put their code in, commit their code in, all the way to where it is deployed. 
you know, to this thing. So, and uh, that's the concept of uh, CICD again, you know, and this is a typical pipeline. You know, you see that arrow going from one stage to the other. It's just stages, 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 stages. I will show you this to you on Jenkins and then, you know, that's what Jenkins is known about, is known for, you know, um, to, to undo stuff like this, to do the, the pipeline, like the pipeline, you know, to um, we'll be doing that extensively in this because that's very, very key, you know, to uh, develop and uh, even to interviews and stuff like that. So again, the difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment is, you know, okay, you, if you can see from the, from the one, from, the, from this pipeline, or this um, segment up here, you know, it goes, this one is auto, note the word auto here, yeah, automatic, you know, they don't need to do anything to just trigger, pa, 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 you know, everything to the finish, you know, although it can take time, depending on, you know, some, <laughs> some application are like, we are talking of thousands of lines. So this thing can run for like 20 minutes, you know, <laughs> before, before it get before it pass through testing, do all this thing, you know, Everything each stage can take up to ten minutes in a in a big environment, you know. But uh, the one we'll be playing with will not be up to that, of course. So, but the key difference here is that after uh, everything, after the code uh, test, integration test, and other stuff, acceptance test to deploy to production, you see the last stage is deployed to production. And like I said, production is a very like they don't play with it, you don't mess with things like that, like that. So I would say most organizations used to do this. You know, they use ma they deploy manually. They don't allow pipeline to do everything to production, which is continuous deployment here. You know, you see this one is automatic all the way to the end. But for this last, uh, for this first one on top, there's a manual stage in between the last stage and deploying to production. What you are trying to do here is that you are trying to make sure. You want to do it manually. You don't want the pipeline to just push everything all the way. You want to like make sure you want to check physically, maybe, maybe your the software, um, software tester, you know, um, they are uh, they are QA tester, you know, in every team and stuff like that. Maybe you want them to to check it to do like manual check before you put it out because once you get to this stage, this is where the customer has seen the application. Production is where you know you are everywhere. So if you have any anything, any crazy stuff going on here, and uh, this thing, that's a disaster. It's very very. So most cases, organization always prefer, most company always prefer to do it manually from this stage, from the last stage to deploy it to production. They don't just want to push everything. But this is what continuous deployment is all about. You know, to take it all the way from um, when uh, the code is complete, do all the build, test, everything, and deploy automatically everything to production. Again, this is a bit dangerous unless you are, you are very confident in your system that, okay, these are, these are cool. So then just getting to know the difference between the two, continuous delivery, continuous deployment. So yeah, and uh, you know, we have a lot of tools, you know, DevOps is known for tools, you know, there are so many tools for CICD, you know, again, a lot and the uh, good news is you don't need to learn everything, you know, you don't need to, I mean, um, you don't need to like, for example, when we are doing source control um, management, like, you know, GitHub, you know, I was mentioning like, okay, there are a lot of tools they use for that, not just GitHub, you know, there's Bitbucket, there's this thing that you don't need to learn. Once you learn one of them, but you need to learn at least one of those important tools. You know, for example, when we get to like configuration management, you know, we talk about Ansible. There are other tools they use apart from Ansible, like Puppet, like Chef, like all those stuff. But we are just focusing on Ansible and you would be good just to learn one of them. So same thing with uh, CICD tools. You know, there are a lot of this thing. Matter of fact, the project I'm working on currently, they use one, they call it Concourse CI. You know, I've never seen it before. I had to be watching going to YouTube and see how they use it and, you know, having to read some documentation about it because it's completely different. You know, they are different, uh, but they follow the same pattern. They have st stages, different steps and stuff like that. They kind of, if you know one, you know, any company will, will be okay with you. They believe that 
you can always transfer the knowledge to the distant. And again, the best thing is to learn the most common ones in the market, which is, you know, that's the safest way. Same thing with cloud. Of course, AWS is not the only cloud. Azure is also very huge. Google Cloud is there, you know, um, OpenShift, IBM, all those stuff. But, you know, you don't have to stress yourself and be learning multi-cloud like that, you know, just, just be good at one, you know, then it's, um, and be good, good, you know, then I can assure you, you are, you'll be okay. Same thing with this CICD tools, you know, we have Jenkins, we have Psycho CI, we have AWS have their own too, you know. Again, that's why when you are learning AWS, they won't teach you Jenkins, that's it, you know, they won't teach you Travis or Bamboo. The AWS will teach you their own CICD pipeline, which is not even common in the market. Even people that use AWS in their, for their environment, they don't use their pipeline. They, they just install Jenkins on AWS and they run Jenkins. You know, same thing with Azure too. You know, so most of those cloud are like that. Mainly they just use their server and some other services. Some of the other services they have, they don't, they, many companies don't use them like that, you know. So, and that's why learning certification is different from, you know, uh, we not really, um, learning AWS alone will not give you good chance in the market because if you learn AWS, AWS will only teach you code pipeline here. Yeah. You know, they will teach you, instead of uh, using Jenkins, they will teach you code pipeline. Instead of using Terraform, they will teach you cloud formation. They will never, and you know, Terraform is the leader, main leader. So when you get to this thing, they, okay, you know, we don't even use uh, this thing. They only use AWS to host as a server to host their distance, which is platform as a server, that, uh, as a service. That's what the most organization use it for. I mean, they still use the other service, maybe S3 bucket, you know, some other distance. But they wouldn't be using maybe, um, of course, some company can still use like Lambda and stuff like that, depending. But they will still be using other, other third party, you know, a lot, which are most common. You know, AWS is good for one thing. They are not good for everything. So that's the distance. So this class we are focusing on Jenkins. So there's Bamboo, Azure to have their own. I'm sure Google Cloud to have their own and stuff like that. So it's um, so these are pipe, some of the pipeline. Yeah. So Jenkins, you know what is Jenkins? You know this is the sign for Jenkins. It's a, it's an open source. It's free. You know good news. And those are some of the reason why you know some of all those organization you know they prefer to use uh, some of all those third party, this thing. Like this Jenkins is free. You know, you have a lot of people using it so you can easily get help. If you are stuck with Jenkins, you can easily get help all over the internet. You know, there are so many, so many articles written on Jenkins, so many lab you see, so many scripts you see on Jenkins. So you are not, it makes it, you know, very easy to use and the more, um, the community is very huge, you know, uh, because so many people use it, you know, unlike when you are stuck with AWS code pipeline, you know, you, you have to call AWS in some cases or, you know, try to, I'm not saying there, there are no, uh, nobody is using all those things, but, you know, very few compared to um, some other um, leaders in the market. So it's an open source automation tool written in Java with plugins built for continuous integration purpose. So it do continuous delivery as well, you know, depending on what you want to use it for. So but, um, that's just overview of Jenkins. And again, how Jenkins work, you know, this is a typical Jenkins and the same way I've been, you know, explaining the other time from the top here, you see developer checking in their code. It's just like pushing their code. The same thing we are doing last week, Git push, you know, they push the code Jenkins we know. Again, we are going to connect Jenkins with uh, GitHub today. You see how they work together. So Jenkins, we know that there's a new, new change in the code automatically. You know, developer don't need to do anything. The developer don't need to start Jenkins or anything. Jenkins is already running or keep uh, checking the GitHub uh, repository to see what is going on. So immediately Jenkins see that something has changed. You know, there's a new change. Jenkins will grab the code, you know, Jenkins will like pull the code, you know, build it. You know, you see this um, artifact I was talking about, build artifact, you know, it could be exe, file, you know, the one you see on your Windows computer, you see .exe. Those are like artifacts, you know, after, after the code has been built, compiled and everything, 
So, you know, Jenkins, we do everything, we build it, you know, take it to, you know, this like deployment, you know, after Jenkins is done, Jenkins can put it to another environment. They can do various tests They you know, put it into live service, like a production, which I talk about, do the deployment, you know, they can do reports back and forth. Again, this is where Jenkins is. And, you know, I think this diagram, you know, really show how it works, you know, it will pull the code from GitHub automatically, you know, then do all the action, perform everything A to Z, you know, um, maybe not A to Z, some company can use other tools. There are so many tools you can use, integrate within Jenkins to do, uh, but at least, you know, Jenkins will build it, can perform the testing, can, it can deploy as well, but, you know, some company prefer to deploy um, with other tools or whatever. So that um, it will de literally do a lot of process along the way. So um, these are this is just typical. And Jenkins works on plugins. You know, plugins are the uh, are, are primarily um, enhancing the functionality of Jenkins. You know, just like you know, uh, just like you in download, you have your um, and that is one of the reason why Jenkins is very very popular. It has so many plugins that you know you can literally do anything there. You can have a plugin that will send email to you whenever uh, Jenkins build a job. You know you can have a plugin that we that will do so many things depending on your use case. You know you can integrate it with so many things. So it makes Jenkins very very popular in the market with the extensive plugin community. It has you know which are easily download. Um, downloadable any uh, within Jenkins uh, dashboard, which I'm going to show all those Jenkins too. So again, Jenkins uh, plugins are just like other tools, just like small software, you know, that you download to help you do things, you know. So it's um, it's very very yeah, it's a very very vital part of uh, Jenkins. You know, again, depending on the use case, different organization use diff use different tools, use different integration use different language, you know, maybe this um, organization is using, is writing their code in Java, the other one is writing their code in um, in Python, you know, the other one is writing. So you need different tools based on the language to like put in Jenkins so that Jenkins will know. For example, uh, the Java application we'll be working on in this class, we use like a Maven, there's other one they call Gradu also. So but uh, I've only used Maven so far. But you use all those one to build Java application, and they are, they are plugin as well that you can um, install to Jenkins. You know Jenkins will not know that this is a, this thing unless you have to install that Maven to Jenkins before Jenkins can build with it. You know so Jenkins will now use the plugin to build the application. So you know if you are writing with other language. You have to download, you know, some of others plugins too. You know, maybe you want to do that. There are lots you can do with Jenkins plugin. A lot of them. So then uh, again, these are the what we are going to cover in the lab today. You know, um, yeah, we do the bit. Uh, we do some scripting, but I uh, will first install Jenkins for before we do the scripting. So uh, we, um, we of course we launch EC2. I uh, will assume most of us have already launch our issue two that's running right now, you know, uh, with port 8080. You know, it's different from 80. This one 8080, you know, it's different from HTTP port we use, uh, I think two weeks ago or, or last week, you know, um, you know, this is 8080, which is like a weird Jenkins run by default, custom, custom Jenkins and ports. So we have to open it on the EC2. We have to install Jenkins, we have to log in, we integrate it. We, we're going to create like a few job, you know, with the call um, freestyle. Then probably we, we can do pipeline, you know, so just a little bit, just, it will just be basic. There will not be code. There's no code now, you know, next week I will provide the code we are going to use. You know, don't worry. It's not like we are writing code, you know, I'll just give you the command to, to use then, you know, it will generate like the code, you know, uh, to generate like the code, the Java code that we use, then, you know, we can push it to GitHub. Then we'll be working on that from, from there because even me, I'm not a developer. I don't, I can only do Python. I can write uh, software code. So it's, um, so basically 
that's what we're going to do. So, but there's this small, like a script, you know, you just have to run it, then it will generate a Maven, we call it Maven job. So the Maven job, it's like a, it's like a Java web application, you know, but with a lot of dependency, you see all the dependency I was talking about. So then we are just going to push it into a repo, a GitHub repository, then, you know, then we start using it from there. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Tenet. Yeah. Sorry, which um, rule is 800? Uh -huh. Which rule? Um, no, it's, um, it's TCP. It's TCP. TCP, custom TCP, right? Yeah, yeah, you can put, yeah, custom TCP, yeah, yeah. Because it's not a defined port on AWS, you know. Again, when we're talking about port, we talk about the common one like A0, which is for HTTP. Oh, so, about... so, so okay, I, I can just edit it to A0. Right? Exactly, you can edit it anytime. I had another rule, yeah. So, okay. yeah. yeah. Then, right. you know, make sure it's open to 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 slash anyway, 0. Anyway, anyway. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So uh, that way we will be able to access our Jenkins on the distance. If not, we'll not be able to access it. So, um, again, we're going to go, let's get our hands dirty. Let's, you know, get to the lab part. And uh, yeah, any questions so far before we proceed? No question. Okay. I think that looks easy enough then. Mm. Okay. So um, yeah, uh, since there's no question, let's proceed to, to our lab today and then uh, see what we got. Mm. Let me let me go to my dashboard. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so again, it's um, if you don't really understand everything now, you know, it's okay. Like, again, <laughs> it took me some time to, to get the concept and stuff like that, you know. So, just take it slowly, you know. Maybe you want to read more resources, and as time goes on, as we are doing all this lab, you'll be getting a clearer picture of how these things work, you know, especially together, you know. Um, you know, yeah, I was new to software world, so I don't know. I don't know. see your screen again. Yeah, I'm not sharing yet. Uh, yeah, okay, let me share now. No, I don't have much thing to share like that. Just to go on AWS and they launch. Okay, let me see. I'm sharing this. I'm sharing. And then okay. Um, okay, can you guys see my screen now? Yeah. Okay, okay, I appreciate that, appreciate that. Yeah, so we're going to, so yeah, can you can see my AWS uh, dashboard now. Mm, can you see my AWS dashboard? Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you guys. Yeah, so again, yeah, yeah I'm starting from scratch, you know, even though I have um, another Jenkins running, uh, you know, I'm going to just quickly run um launch uh, an ec2 that we're going to use for this lab and there uh, you know uh, we encourage you guys to keep it running because you know we we are going to be working on this jenkins a lot you know uh, for the next maybe one week or two you know we're going to do a lot within the environment so you can keep you don't have to terminate it you can stop it actually you know if you just feel like it. i don't think they will charge you even if you don't stop it so better, you can stop it, but don't terminate it unless you just want to go through the process of installing it again. So, um, but um, yeah, so you can keep it running. And uh, you know, I hope, I believe, um, yeah, by the end of the class. Sorry, is it a free service on AWS? What? The Jenkins, you said we should keep it running because on my Azure, I kept some things running and I have to pay about $50. No, no, we are not using uh, Jenkins. Is not a WS service. We just we just using EC two. We just using yeah, that's what I'm saying for running on EC two. Hope it's not being current some charges. No, no, no. So far we are within free tier. Yeah, if we are within free tier and uh, that's why you, uh, most of you guys the account is still fresh. I don't think they will they will charge again. Make sure you set okay. up the the this thing. 
you make sure you set up your budget always, you know, and uh, you know, you get notified once you are charged just one dollar, they will alert you. So be um confident, you know, so far for now, unless until we get to some more this thing, installing some other tools, you know, that require higher capacity, you know, because there's this tool we call like uh, Sonar Cube, you know, and we have to use at least T2 small, which is this, which is not within free tier. So, you know, so that may charge you a little bit uh, more, you know, but uh, we are just staying within this guy now. So I believe we'll be okay. Again, worst case scenario, you know, you can just stop it, you know, but I'm very confident they won't charge you. So they won't charge you for keeping it running, especially for now. So when they will charge you, I'll likely tell you. So um, I'm nesting everything now. So everything as default, I don't need to do anything here. Um, storage, I'm leaving it as default tag. You know, you can, let me put a name with it. Again, you can do this on the dashboard after you launch it. You know, it's kind of easier that way. You know, name, give it something, um, Jenkins server, just to make a difference. You know, if you only have one server on your distance, probably don't need to name it anything. Then security group is very, so I'm not going to do new security group because if you keep leaving this as default, at the end of the day, you see that you've created like 50 security group. So, you know, so if, you, if you've if created one before, you know, just go to select an existing security group, you know, so I have a few of them that I've been working with so far, you know, but uh, maybe for the sake of uh, practice, let's create a new one, you know, let's leave it as new, you know, or then let's say, okay, um, um, Jenkins, SG, security group or whatever, you know, you can leave the distance. But the rule I'm talking about here is, you know, make sure you add this rule, guy, you know, it's very important. If you've not, if you did not add it before you launch the this thing, I can show you how to go back and, you know, add the rule. You can always add the rule at any point. Maybe you're trying to access your Jenkins, you notice your Jenkins is not running then you like, okay, I think I don't have my port A00 open. So you can still go back anytime, even while, while your server is running, you can still go back, add this rule and just update it. Just, you know, put the, any of this thing. So right now I'm just going to uh, add rule. Then I will leave it at custom TCP, you know, because it's not, um, it's a custom, it's a custom port number. It's not any of all this one we have here. You know, it's not like SSH, it's not HTTP, so it's custom. So that's why we are choosing the custom rule. So of course it's TCP port, then TCP protocol, then the port is A0, A0. It's different from just A0. A0 is, uh, is another one. It's the one we use for the server the other day, which is uh, the HTTP port, HTTP port, yeah. So then, you know, make sure the source is anywhere, you know, again, automatically we put the IEP for you. You don't need to do anything. It's just telling you that 0, .0, 0, 0 slash 0 is anywhere. Then this one you are seeing is just for IPv6, you know, which is not really, yeah, whatever. So again, it's telling you that you, are, you open it to the world. We are okay with that, you know, so we can review um, and launch. So let's review and launch now. So again, this key pair part again, you know, I already have the key pair. I think the first class or second class, I created it. So I leave it at say, you can click this drop down. You see some of the other ones I've created or whatever. So but I think this is the, because I log in on different computer and you know, if you download it and it's not on, on the computer you downloaded it to, you know, you'll not be able to, you just have to create another one on that computer or find a way to like, maybe send it to yourself by email or anything. You know, but it must be present on your local computer. So um, click, I acknowledge, whatever, then launch instance. I believe most of us can do this um, by now. So um, we can go down, view instances. Then this is the new one we created. I terminate, I just, okay, yeah, this is the new, oh my God. <laughs> they are very similar to the, let me rename this. Uh, let me rename this, uh, Jenkins. Uh, good. <laughs> I don't want to mix it up. No way it doesn't. I don't want to mix it up. Let me rename one of them. So I rename one of them to Jenkins. So this is the one I had before. This is the one that I just uh, launched. This this fourth one. 
So you can click on it, you can see the detail. Again, maybe you've you already run it this thing. You know, if you come down here, you go to security, you can only see your security group here. You can open it in a new tab or whatever. So you will see the rule that are open here. It tells me that port A0 is is open, port 22 is open. Port 22, again, is for SSH. You know, it will, if, if this is not open, you'll not be able to log into your server via SSH. So then this one, we allow us to access the application. Right now, we don't have application on our server. It's just an empty server running. But you know, you have to open the port ahead of time. So even before you install anything. So I think we are good now, you know, everything looks okay. If we go to the left, we have our public IP address already. You know, of course you can always see that here, yeah, if you go to detail down, yeah, again, you can always see the public IP address again. You know, again, we don't have nothing here. So even if, even if we access this, we're not going to see anything because nothing's running on the server. It's just empty, just like empty computer. You don't have anything you install there. So, but again, we have the we have the server up and running, and the, you know, let's try and connect with it. Uh, let me use my item uh, this time. So I'm going to. I think my this download is. Um, I think my key is in. I think my key is in. Um, oh my God, my key is not here. Yeah, the key I use for this is not here. So. Uh, I don't know where, and uh, I can't download it again. You can only download the key once. So I think it's on my other account that I log in with. So um, yeah, so if I if I try to log in from here now, because you see, um, let me make this a little bit big. You see the key, it's not uh, the key I use. I think I use Apache something, something. Yeah, is it the same key that we use for Ubuntu? Or we have to download the key separate for Jackie's? No, you can use the same. You can use the same, you know. You okay. can use the same. Yeah. Yeah. You see, okay, okay. You see, I have I have new key here, but I didn't use this. You know, I launched the server with this key. There's a way you can see the key on here. You know, it's selected now. If you go, let me see. I'm looking for the key. You see the key name so that you know the key you use, then you know what you can look for. You know. I think it's networking. Let me say networking. No, it should be security. Yeah, I'm just trying to see the key. No, it's not. So, but if you click um, connect here, you will see the key again. You know, here it's telling me that um, if you go to SSH client, so it's telling me that this is the key I use, you know, Apache.pem is the name of the key I use here. But if I look at my item now, I don't have that. Right here, I don't know where I where I keep the key. I don't know. Maybe it's not on this computer. I don't know. So obviously, I will not be able to. But let me let me just do uh, let me just do this and just log in directly on the web. So I, I don't think the web will require a key. Okay. Yeah, you can try this. Sometimes it may not work. You know, I don't know. Sometimes like you can you can access it directly from the web like this. But it. In my timeout very quickly, and uh, you know, I don't really like it much like that. But for some reason, I don't. I oh, don't... Hello, we can use Git Bash, right? Because I yeah, you can use Git Bash. Yeah, yeah. This one is almost the same thing as Git Bash. You can use Git Bash. You know, just that's why on the instruction I say just log in with anyone you prefer. You know, okay. then this thing. Yeah, it's very important. So you can use Git Bash, but you know, we're in the server now. You know, so you know Ubuntu server, and uh, you know. So the first thing do you use and uh, you do for installing, because now we are trying to install Jenkins on this server. So to install Jenkins on the server, there's this um, uh, application, which is um, because Jenkins is written in Java, in Java, you know, I don't know Java, I've never said Java. So, you know, I mean, those that write the application. So, you know, you need, you need it to run in a Java environment. So you need to install a Java um, runtime environment. That's what they call it, JDK or JRE or whatever. So I think I have the code somewhere to do the installation. I think I will, I will be sending the code to you guys. The first thing you will do is, um, I'll be sending the code um, charts in case you're trying to follow along. Um, Kenneth, just um, a quick question. I see into my downloads, my, um, my key, is there 
Yeah, okay. yeah, just just so what, what just, I, yeah, just run this command. Once you once you see D and your into the download, I can run this command. Right? Yeah, yeah, run the command. Um, yeah, just run. Let me see. Let me show you the command. Once you see the into download, you know, run this command. If you've not if you've not run this command before, you know, you have to run it. There's a one time command. You know, just copy td. You know, it will be different from your own because this will be the name of the key. Then to connect, just run the one that says the example here. You know, just copy it. You know, this example, just copy it, bam. If I run it, it will give me error because I don't have the key there. You know, let me okay. let, let me just run it on my, this like a git bash, you know. So is it trying to connect? Yeah, you see it says permission deny public key. You see that because I don't have the public, I don't have the key in this, in this folder, in my download folder. So that's why I couldn't um, log in with this. So I, I have to figure out where I download the key. So, but yeah, if you if you see you have the key there and you know it's the key that you use, you know, just run this command and run this example command to, right. yeah, this, then you should be able to connect. Because I tried to do the same thing. It says command not found. What do you try to do? I copied from that um, SSH. Which one? The connect to your user using is public DNS. Yeah. Or, or no, you no. After all the, no, you, you use the example, that. example, the one that says example. That's what you call. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I'm yeah, okay. the one that says example. Yeah, so the first thing you will do here is, you know, we are installing, um, let me know if it works. So okay. we are installing Java first. First of all, we update the apt. You know, the apt is like, so we use sudo apt. Uh, yeah, I think it was. It says, Are you sure you want to? Yeah, just, just enter yes. Yeah. Okay. So you run this command to first update your, um, the because again, for Ubuntu, this is apt. You know, it's used apt as a, um, as a distribution manager or whatever they call it. So, you know, so this one will just kind of like update all the application you have there. So you run that, you know, everything should update, should be updated. You know, so it can take some time. So um, the next command will be, I'll be sending those. Again, don't worry about this command. You know, I look it up also, you know, it's not something you have to cram that, oh my God, I would like, do I have to know this thing? Nope, you know, you don't, nobody <laughs> is uh, this thing. You know, if I want to install Jenkins, I go online that, okay, I want to install Jenkins on my, on my, uh, on my Ubuntu server. Then you see all those things. So there's nothing, nothing more than that. So I'm running the other one now, which we install. Let me, let me, let me clear my screen. Let me clear my screen. So this one install Jenkins, right? No, 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 not install Jenkins. This one, the, the next one I'm running now, it will install the Java application, they call it JDK. So this way, okay, first of all, before I even run it, let's say, let's run Java. If I run Java, version you know on my distance i want to see if java is on this, this. Is minus minus version no just one minus just one minus yeah so you see it tell me that java is not installed and it gives me option to install it so you can run any of this thing or whatever so that's why i'm using this one so these are the alternatives so it's telling me java is not found but you can install with this so i'm using one of them now to do the installation which is the uh, this so you know okay. Java has to is a requirement for Jenkins to run. You know you have to have that Java environment. You know um, before it can run. So the minus Y is just to say yes. You know because it's going to prompt you to answer yes. So Java is running now. Um, Java is getting installed now. I think this will take a few minutes as well. And then the next code, we basically again don't worry much about all this installation code. Nobody, nobody cram installation, nobody. And nobody will ask you in the interview that, okay, how do you, I mean, even if they are, we go, go as far as saying, how do you install this thing? You just have to like describe it to the, okay, you, you install, you make sure Java application is running then you, I mean, I've never seen such, a, nobody will even ask you that. And even on the job, you know, they give you, okay, install, install, just copy everything there. And they give you to install that this thing. You go online, you know, do, do your do your research, look at way to re, 
to install it and you know so this is the next one so this again wget if you remember when we we're learning this linux is just to like download something um download like a key so then i think it will pipe it to another i don't really know detail about what this command is doing actually but again it's on so it will just give you okay once you say okay know that you are good so the next command will be running will be this guy um, which i'm going to share again so yeah these these are all those installation uh most of them for the all this stuff you know you do you just run command you know you are you're operating in um, in a terminal you know there's no there's no distance so it's uh, it's always like this so i will share um, the next one i don't know if it's going to hmm. i don't like the way this play down let me come up with it i'm going to do control c let me clear my screen so um hold on yeah so nobody we nobody we ask you to to memorize all these things so the main thing is we just want to install this thing and then you know so yeah okay this is the next command again no matter uh, whatever this one is doing you know I, I i don't really care much so then um i put that in the distance too so then the next one will be let me share it again in the code you're going to update the repository again again i'll send all this thing to you guys to just uh but uh, main thing we are just installing the the jenkins that's what is important then i think we are getting closer then the last one will be to uh update this let me copy that uh, to install jenkins uh, Jenkins, Jenkins, let me see. Okay. And that would be. Let's see. No, no, Mr. Jenkins. Okay. Yeah, so you answer why. So, yeah, that is it. Jenkins should be up and running now if this goes successfully. So, but again, all those ones, they are just like, you know, what you have to install before putting Jenkins, because if you just do install Jenkins, it will not work the way it's supposed to work. So those are just like prerequisites. Some um, like some of them are just like small distance that you have to run before. The, the only thing I have is this um, sudo sh. I think the command, when I copy it, the way it's um, giving me a uh, which one? Uh, let me see. It's to do SH minus C. Okay, minus C. It's giving you error. Yeah. I think this is where you copy it. Yeah, let me see again. Let me recopy it. Um, yeah, I think my own says it's good to go in. Yeah, let me re let me recopy it and send it. Okay. Hopefully it works this time. Yeah, that's what happened with copy and paste all the stuff sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully it will work now. So because you need to draw this one. So right now, uh, so right now our Jenkins should be up and running now. So, but how do we know that? Again, we access it from the public IP address, which we talked about. This is the public IP address. Or again, you can view it from, if you go back, if you go back here, you can see the public IP here. You know, this is a private IP, which we also talked about that day. You know, be you know, you will be able to view it from the pub. Whose echo is that? Yeah, so we'll be able to view it from here. So um, if everything was good, if you go to our browser now, paste, paste this, uh, paste the IP address, column A0A0, which is the port. You know, um, you are telling me that okay, I want to access, I want to access this server, then I want to access. And Jenkins on this server because Jenkins run out on a zero zero. So if we enter now, um, we should be able to see Jenkins. You know, this is the first stage you see. Then once you see this, so it's telling you that you need this password. So just copy this directory. You know, this is like a directory. You know that Jenkins already creates on your server. Copy it. You know, again, if you remember how we used to 
view, if you want to view a file, you know, which we talk about during Linux class. And that's why I try to do Linux before this thing. So and you have to do sudo, especially since it's, uh, so you have to do sudo cat. So, because now this thing is telling us that our password, the admin password that we will need here to enter is inside this place. It's inside under var, under dash, eh, under var, under lib, Jenkins, secret, this is like a path. You know, this is like a folder, another folder inside this, another folder, if you remember our Linux stuff. So it's just telling us that we can find the password here because we can't continue without the path without that password, it's a long password that we don't know. So we need to view the content of it, what is there, you know, just like when we are viewing file, when we when we created a, a file that day, we, we use cat, you know, to view it. Cat will allow you to see the content of the file. So I will copy the link here because I don't want to be going, because normally what I should be doing is I should be doing CD to, to var, you know, to then to lib, you know. Um, just a moment, can I? Yeah, I copied the public um IP from EC2, my EC2 and what else? Yeah, dot a, a column a zero a zero. Yeah, public IP column um column yeah eight zero eight zero yeah. Oh, column. See the secret. So you know, I will have to be going into this directory one by one. So that's why I just I just copy the directory and I will just do like okay, cut, uh, sudo. You have to do sudo because okay, let's see if we don't do sudo. You see, and uh, you know this is another thing you have to look out for, guys. You know when you are working in and you are getting. So now we want to see the content of this this thing. So you see what you get permission deny. Once you get that, try sudo. Anything you are doing. You are getting on this permission, this thing, just use sudo. Sudo will give you elevated uh, privilege, like admin privilege, because what you are trying to do, uh, I think I'll press something. Yeah, so, okay, let me copy the directory again. This way I don't like to use the this, this one. So I we, I will sudo, then cut, then the directory, I'll paste the directory here, which is the one I copy from here. Okay, I got my. Yeah, so it will generate, it will bring you that code that you are looking for. You see it here, you know, again, cut is for you to read the file. You know, this guy is a file here. If I CD into all this directory, you see that it's a file. So let me just say CD, control V. Let me delete the last one because the last one is a file. Okay, I can't even see the there unless I use sudo. Control A, sudo. Say command of fun. Okay, whatever. I don't think I can. I think it's a file too. But basically, let me clear it again and run the run the cut. So this is the cut, you know. So this is the command you are looking for. This is the password you are looking for. You know. Um so just copy it. You don't need to stress yourself with anything. Just copy it directly. Go go to your Jenkins. You will paste it in Jenkins. Yeah, just paste it in Jenkins. Again, the directory is right here. You know, you can just copy sudo cut, sudo then cut it. Then you should see the password. Then just continue. So if you if you do that, we allow you to continue. And this is the plugin I talked about. You know, it's telling us to customize our Jenkins. So you know. I suggest you know, just install suggested plugin. So it will suggest some plugin for you that are good. You know, I mean, you can you can skip it and just say, okay, no, I will do everything manually. But you know, you can click the first option here to just install any useful plugin for you. So it will take time. You see, this is a folder plugin. This is um, build timeout. There's a lot of them. Uh, Jenkins have thousands of Jenkins. Uh, of plugin, so you know again, depending on the use case, depending on what you want to do. This email extension may be for to send email to outside people. You know, um, you know, Git is there. This will allow us to integrate it with Git. You know, there are a lot of them. You know, so it's installing them again. They are just like application. You know, it will install everything on your on your Jenkins. So the Jenkins work use all those plugin to like uh, communicate to outside world. 
for integration. So we have Jenkins now, you know, um, let's, let's, for me, I just like to make it simple, use admin, admin password, you know, I don't, it's not like, I mean, you can customize it, use your own name and password and stuff like that. It doesn't matter. And so you can put anything here, Ken at admin.com. If you want to put your real email, it's okay, but you have to just provide all the, all the credential that's, you know, I we assure you it doesn't really uh, mean much. The main thing is you have to remember your username and password. So yeah. Yeah. So, uh, sorry. I already followed, so I got everything. The only place to go to your fast. I already got to where it says getting started on log Jenkins. Mm -hmm. So um I don't know what you did, how you got the administrator password after that. You already put the password, right? No, I didn't. I don't know how to get the password. What password? I see the var lib. Yeah, yeah. Code. Copy that link. Then okay. Oh, let okay. me hold on. Let me let me put it in the this thing. You go to your um dashboard. Okay. Yeah. Then you run sudo cat and put in it. Then the that directory that you have, which is var. I can't remember everything. I think var dot. Uh, I think you can share your screen. So just what is doing? No, no, I already, no, 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 I don't. I already okay. passed that stage. So yeah, he passed that stage. So I, mean, I can't go back there again. I don't think so. So, but again, I put the command there. Maybe the S is small letter, of course. You know, oh, the sudo so, okay. cat. Oh, this is what this one I put in this um cat, right? Yeah, cat. You know, then space that copy that directory. The full. Oh, part. okay, okay. Yeah, then just. Just hit enter, so it will generate that password for you. Then you should be able to, um, you should be able to do this uh, to to proceed from there. Okay. Then you copy that password and paste it to Jenkins. So again, URL for Jenkins. You know, in organization, you may want to customize this, but again, it's just telling us that this is how we will access our Jenkins. You know, this is the, and this is the same thing we are doing up there. You know, from its uh, three point. This is the IP address, then this is the port. So you, so that just then save and finish. So then Jenkins is up and running. Let's see how Jenkins looks like. Okay, so I see one password. It, I think it's generated one with NVCD, right? It says what? I think when I put the um, pseudo cards. Yeah. Then I saw like a long line of. Yeah, yeah, just copy that password. Yeah, just copy it. Okay. From your screen, then paste it, go to your Jenkins, paste it there. So guys, welcome to Jenkins world. This is how Jenkins look like. We've been working in this. I mean, Jenkins is also user friendly because it's, uh, you know, okay. although, although there are scripts there too. Yeah, just nest it then, you know. Is that, it install suggested plugin? Yeah, yeah, install suggested plugin, yeah. Mm. So, you know, everything is, you know, up and running now, you know, we can create new item, you know, people, you know, views, everything. So um, right now, I just want to show something briefly, you know, um, about script and, you know, just to see, to show you how script works. And uh, um, so I'm going to, um, you see all this installation process we did and stuff like that. So I want to real quick, let me see. No, don't let me do that. Maybe next class I'll do that. So basically this is Jenkins um, dashboard and you know, uh, these are, you can create this thing here. This is where you'll be working with most manage Jenkins. You know, you will see a lot of option here. You know, these are the plugin I talk about. You know, if you click manage plugin now, you can, you go to like available. So there's a lot of them, tons of them, you know, a lot, a lot. You cannot even exhaust it. I don't know, why does it just end? So, but you know, Jenkins have so much this thing. You can search anything you want here. Maybe you want some AWS, um, this thing. So it's telling you that it's two. Maybe you want to do some things on, this is agent, you know. Agent, we're just going to talk about it too, maybe later. So you can do so many, there are so many things you can do here. You know, maybe maybe you are looking for some email notification or whatever. There are a lot of plugin customization. You know, this one say GitHub integration. You know, a lot of them. So 
you know, plugins, it's a lot. These are the one we have installed. These are the one that we installed when we came in on the dashboard, you know, a lot of them, some of them, I don't know what they do, you know. <laughs> so, but again, depending on your use case, the plugin are very powerful in Jenkins, and you know, which is something you'll be working with a lot. You know, then another this thing you want to look in is this um, globe, global tool configuration. You know, when we start installing all this plugin, here you can customize your Git. You know, you can, uh, this is the Maven I talked about, you know, they use for building. You know, this the Gradle tool is also a building tool and it's for building application. Maven, this is the one we'll be using. Then we are just going to add Maven here, you know, do the configuration, you know, um, yeah, remove this, add Maven home, you know, put the IP address or whatever, you know. So we're going to do all those one, you know, next class. And then, you know, but today, you know, we're just going to play play around with Jenkins a little bit, you know. Um, so the first thing I want you to notice is, you know, new item. Right now we don't have anything there. Nothing is running on our Jenkins, no job, no nothing. Again, yeah, so, you know, if we, let me go to my GitHub, you know, the Git, because now I'm trying to integrate Jenkins. I want to integrate my GitHub with Jenkins. So I want my Jenkins to be able to pick up uh, things that is that are on my GitHub and, you know, to run it, to run. If I have any code there, Jenkins should be able to pick it up automatically and do all the build. And I, although I don't have any build um, building tool installed right now, so, you know, next class is what we're going to do. So, but now I'm just doing the integration, you know, um, this is my GitHub account. You remember last week when I created this repository, uh, which is um, which is this guy here, and git, uh, this git class, which I create, created last this thing. So I can use that, you know, I can put that in my, and again, if you want to do, check the code or whatever, you, some people use the link up here or whatever, but I don't think if you can use it every time, but you know, you come to this place and, and click this copy. You know, you come to code, copy it, you know. For example, we want to link this, this repo, this repository to, to Jenkins. So, you know, um, if we get this copy. So again, let's just forget about um, that uh, shortly. So to create a job, you know, to create a job, new job, you know, in company, you see like, it is something different project they are working on. They will have different this thing. So yeah, this is where it all gets started. You create new item here, then you give it a name. Um, first project or anything, you know, first project, you know. So now we be, there are different options. Yeah, actually the one I've actually used is this two. Um, pipeline, pipeline is very common. I mean, it's the main this thing there. I'm not really too familiar with others one. Then freestyle project is just basic. We'll be doing freestyle project today. Or maybe we can do some basic pipeline too. The freestyle project is just a basic one, one build or whatever. Pipeline is the one you will see multiple steps, multiple stages. You will see different, different things. So if you if you click on freestyle project, you give it a name, of course, first project, you know, click on this freestyle project. So it's selected already. So, and then you just click okay. So, um, so that will take you to this page, you know, so it's giving you option to configure, to make changes on, and you can see a lot of option here. You can scroll down actually, you know, you don't need to, or you can just navigate yourself from here, you know, different things you want to do, you know. So basically this is just in general, you know, you can just give it a description or if you like, this is optional completely optional, you know. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't have time for that actually. So, you know, here you can, what you can do here now is you see this option that says source code management, which is last week we were uh, talking about source code management. That's when we talk about Git. So it's telling you that to kind of like integrate your Git here to put your Git URL so that Jenkins can talk to Git. You know, Jenkins will know where your Git is. You know, this is the location of your Git. Now, you know, so um, if I click on this, by default, it's on none, it's on none. So if I click on Git now, so it's asking me that what is my repository URL? So again, this is what I copy here, you know, when I go inside my repository, 
you know, again, I have many repository guys. So, you know, maybe you only have one, you know, just use that for now. You know, this is my repository. So um, if I go to code here, copy the link, this is where you see the link from this HTTP. There's SSH link, there's a lot of other ones, but this is the one you'll be doing mostly. So if you copy this, you know, it's copied already, or you can copy it manually if you like. So, you know, this is what Jenkins wants you to use. So if I paste it here, Jenkins is happy. You see that the error code is, assuming this is, this credential is important if, if my Jenkins is in private, is a private repository. You remember last week we created it, I made it public. I put the repository public option. You know, that is why I don't have to put any credential here. If it's private, I will have to put credential here, which is another, this thing, you know, you have to create credential. You put your Jenkins, you, are, um, you put your GitHub username, password, you know, give it a name, then add, you know, that's if it's private. Now it's completely not necessary. So we are not going to do that. I'm just going to cancel. So I'm going to leave it as default. Right now, my Jenkins can communicate with my GitHub. You know, he can see everything going on in my GitHub repository. So here is telling you that which branch do you want to build? Again, we talked briefly about branching. If you don't know what that is, again, this is the branch. You know, master, my code is a master. You know, organization, they can have different branch depending on they can call this develop or whatever, you know, and just say, okay, create from a master branch. You know, now I have two branch, you know, kind of like different, you know, there's a way you can merge it. This is like develop branch. If I want to work on this branch, I will tell Jenkins that, okay, I want to work on develop, I will edit this to develop. But, you know, again, I'll go back to my master branch. You know, I'm happy with master branch, you know, and my, my stuff. So any change that goes to my master branch, Jenkins will know. And Jenkins can do some things depending on what I instruct Jenkins to do. You know, maybe I want it to build, I want it to do anything, it will do it, you know, because he knows, he knows where my repository is, then he knows that um, I want to trigger from, from master branch. So that this is the only thing you have to do, honestly, you know, in integrating it with Jenkins. So another interesting thing here is, you know, what they call build trigger, you know, what triggers the build, you know, how does the, this thing. So now we are going with this option, git up trigger hook just just click on this actually so but the one i want you to pay more attention is this poll scm so this poll scm we ask you to tell you that okay how how often ben because now i tell jenkins to always check my github for code change you know just like we described in the powerpoint you know whenever there's code change jenkins we know and we start um doing whatever so now I, I tell Jenkins that, okay, keep checking my GitHub whenever there's a code change every minute. Every minute, I want you to do some, I want you to trigger a build whenever there's a this thing. Any, you can specify any time. So yeah, you may be a little bit confused, but if you click on this thing, they cause something um, cron job in, um, in Linux. You know, cron job is everywhere, but if you Google cron job in Linux, there's a sentence for it you know, um, so uh, if you click on this, it's explain it a little bit, bit more, you know, so you have like five different feed that you can choose from minutes. That means that every minute, every hour of the day, every day of the month, every month of the day, every day of the week. So there's five of them. So now what I want is, I want Jenkins to, to build every minute. There's a code change every minute of the day, every hour every day of the month, every month, then every days of the week. So just five star with space, you know, five are uh, aesthetic with space. So basically what this does is that, it, again, you can look it up depending on your requirement. For example, if I want every five minutes now, I can do stuff like, I think it's zero slash five, you know, depending on uh, what you want to do or, okay, I think I can put five as the first one. Let me see. Okay, no, it's not right. It's giving me error. If I want it to build every five minutes, I can just put five here. So it's telling me now that it will just build every five minutes, you know, when there's any change in my code. So that's what it's like, a, they call it cron job, you know. Again, you can look all this thing up and say that, okay, how do you write a cron job? 
you know, we are just using, you know, every minute here to make it very simple, you know, just enter five star, you know, just like this. So you see, it's telling you that, do you really mean every minute when you say, because when you say this thing, it means every minute. So every minute, it doesn't mean we keep building every minute, but when there's a code change from your GitHub, it will build that same minute. That's what you are telling Jenkins to do now. So you can choose anything. Again, this option too, you can decide that, okay, I just want my, let me uncheck this. You know, you can decide that I want to build periodically, you know, irrespective of if there's code change or not. I want, again, you can specify the cron tab job again, you know, um, five stars, you know. So it will do it every, every minute. This is completely not, <laughs> not good. It's not healthy for anyone to do that. So because it will keep building every minute, every minute, even if there's nothing going on in your GitHub, even if there's no code change, you will keep building. So it doesn't make sense like that. Most time you want to go with this option to just, you know, pull it from a source code management, that's SCM, you know, to pull, just like pulling it from there. Then we do that every minute when there's a code change. So if you want to read through, you see all this example, this one is telling you that every 15 minutes, this is the syntax you use. You can do a lot of things, you know, with a lot of, you know, I'm not expert in Linux and cron job, but you know, if I want to do things, I know how to look it up, how to manipulate and stuff like this. So, you know, you basically we just keeping it simple every minute of the day, every hour of the day, every day of the week, month, every month of um, every month and every day. Of, so it will do it. Um, so it's better that way. Then let me let me remove all these stories too much. Yeah, so um, we done with that part. Then build the environment. It's like, okay, where do you want to build it and stuff like that? For now, we are not really going to, you, even for this class, you know, maybe you have some things you want to secret. This, this is not really too important like that. Another interesting thing is the build. What do you want to build, you know? So if you click on this arrow now, you see a lot of options there. You know, you see grad, uh, you see Gradle, you see Ant. These are building tools, what they used to be. Next class, we talk about uh, all this, in some of all these tools. You see Maven, which is what we're going to use like next class. You know, we're going to use Maven as a building tool. So but today, let's just execute a shell. You know, shell is just our normal LS that we've been using, LS, Echo, you know, CD, all those things. These are shell, you know, so, if I click on execute share, because again, I just want to, this is just a very introductory class. So if I say echo um, my first build, you know, so basically echo is just print, you know, but this is a share, you know, you can enter anything here. You can say um, Java slash version, you know, it's like entering command, you know, just like the name, but that's a share. You know, it has to be shell command, like, uh, you know, all those our Linux command that we did. You know, you can do the uh, seed LS here or whatever, you know, stuff like that. You can do anything. So it, uh, so this is what, during the building stage, this is what it will execute. It will execute this, uh, this command during that stage. You know, when we get into um, the main application that we'll be using from next class, you know, we're going to, it's, we're not going to be using all this, um, command bit, you know, just to see you are. Then this is another interesting thing. So this is there already. We're going to leave it there because we want to put something there. So now again, you can add another step here, you know, execute again or whatever. So, but another one is post build action. After you build it, what do you want to do? You know, look at some of the options you get. Okay, send notification, you know, deploy, publish, you know, do things. You can do a lot of things with your, you know, archive the artifacts, you know, because when you build it, the output should be artifacts, you know, which again, I talked about like dot .exe or maybe dot um, .jar file, you know, any, any, any artifacts, you know, but those are what they call artifacts. Like, well, sorry about this noise. Yeah, so but those are what they call artifacts. It, um, so it's telling you that this post build action is telling you that what you want to do with the output after you finish everything. So again, we don't want to really do anything for now. Yeah, you know, just let's just leave it as this thing. So this is the only thing we actually change here. Then this, 
then you know we put our git all back on so let's just save it you know um let's save it right here so right now if you go to your dashboard you see that we have the first job that's built so this first job is built how do you trigger it how do you make it run so that's where you get this option if you click on the job again the name you see this option here build now i want to build it now you know then it will build it but you know in the real world you want it to to build automatically you don't want to come here every time and be clicking build now you know so again for demo sake we can do that you know the reward and that's why we integrate with github so that and we do all these uh pom sms so that to pull it uh, scm to pull it every minute so we are going to show how that will work automatically too then if you want to make any changes you can go to configure here so you go to configure here you can make the same thing the same place we left you know you can make any changes you want you know maybe you are not happy with what you write here you can put another thing there then you know i think we're happy so let's just click build now and see what happened if i click on build now so you see on the bottom here showing pending so you know it's waiting then it shows that it ticket with a uh, macro it shows that it's successful you know if anything happen it will show red so if i click on this now you can see the output this is what happened, you know. So uh, you see the command I ran. I said echo my first job, and you see the result here. So the second command I ran was Java version. Then you see the output at the bottom. This is the output. Then it said finish successful. So basically, this is then you see the first stage. What it's trying to do is cloning my repository. If you see right here, you know, cloning Git repository. So it's cloning this thing meaning that it's copying all the content of what I have here, you know. If I want to do anything on this script, it should be able to do it. So because it's it's cloned this repository now, it's like copy everything. I will show you to all the, the repository. If I go here, so these are the output, but the first stage is it will clone the repository, you know, it will like copy it. Remember Git clone that we used the other time. So because we tell uh, Jenkins to go there, then you know it will execute whatever you ask it to do, whatever information you put. Again, this is a very basic this thing, you know, and this is very um, it doesn't really. So if you go to if you go back to your your uh, folder now, then you go to this workspace here. So I want you to see what it copy. So basically, Jenkins copy all my script, the one I have in the GitHub, it copy it into the folder into this particular folder right here. You see it, then, you know, I can do a lot of things with it depending on this. From the command line, I can execute maybe this script or do anything with it. Although right now I'm not doing anything with all this code. These are not really useful code. These are just, but again, this is the same thing of as what I have in my GitHub. This is my GitHub, as you can see here. Then, you know, it's clone it first then you know you run all the command so basically that is just um high level of uh, you know what jenkins does and you know it will you can provide any let me show you the other jenkins i have which is a bit uh, more this thing i'm going to launch the server okay um let me start this so this is it i am the old one i just want you to see how the pipeline look like right now we're not building any pipeline this is just a simple job you know again this is the first job you can go ahead and create another one and call it second you know in some company they can have like 50 different kind of job depending on this thing second job then i can say okay freestyle again it's okay you know for my git or maybe this one i uh yeah when i select maybe i want another repository here yeah, i don't want this repository i want another repository Maybe I want my this thing, my this guy here. I want this this repository, so I'll copy this. So this is my second job. You know, you know, it's different from the first one. So you know, I can do this. I can paste it here again. You know, um, you know, build for master. Let me see if it's master. Okay, it is main here. I need to update this to main. Yeah, so it will build for main. Then uh, Paul SM. And then I will put the same thing I put the other time. Again, you know, just um, 
don't worry about all this thing. Maybe you feel it's too much. Um, echo, second job. Second job. So, you know, yeah, you know, just, you know, I'm not really doing anything serious here. So I'm just going to save it again. You know, again, what I'm just trying to show you can have a lot of them here. You know, a lot. You know, some company have like 50, 80 different, you know, different projects they work with. So they will have different job. So let's see what happened now. I, I want to make a code, a change to my code. So let's go back to the first one we did. So you see, we only have one build there. So this is how continuous integration work. Let me go back to my other this thing. Um, my first uh, repository, which is this. So let me, I just want to make a change here. I don't want to do it from the CLI. I want to do it that I don't want to do Git, Git pull, Git push, Git all those things. I want to make the change directly from here, you know, from this code. So uh, let's see what happened. Then I will edit. I want to edit something there. I want you to see what Jenkins will do whenever Jenkins detects there's something going on. Um, okay, just another line. So, you know, I'm just making, this could be a code change. This could be a developer coming to, you know, update the code, adding like two lines of, to the code or whatever, you know, it's not going to be something basic like this in reward, of course, you know, but I'm just trying to show you how that thing work, you know, with the, this thing. So I want you to just notice, okay, I just add another line, then I'm just going to click commit. I don't want to even put any message. This is a short course. Instead of you doing git pull, git push, git add, git commit, you know, you can edit directly from git actually there. It's not really best practice, you know, it's uh, better you do or the pull or whatever, but you can actually do this to edit your code. So if I do comment changes now, go to Jenkins, let's wait and see what happened. You see automatically on the left, it triggers, you know, the first one we do it manually, we build it, we click on build. Now Jenkins see it automatically. And that's what you want in the reward. You want when developer make that change in the GitHub, you want Jenkins to pick it automatically and perform all the necessary action that you want. So, you know, that, that's the cool thing about all these CI CD things, you know, you see automatically it just pick the, you notice that there's a change in my GitHub then he just run through the, the old thing again, you know, you see? Yeah, so it's, um, that's the cool thing about, just, I just want to show the other one I have and the, where's the IP address? Okay, let me refresh this. Oh, okay, it's running now. Okay, so um, yeah, let me grab my IP. This, this is another, uh, this thing actually. So uh, this one, I, I just want to show you pipeline how they look like, this is another IP address. This is not the new one I made. So, but again, you can see the, you can see the concept of CICD, you know, how it's, uh, you know, automatically how it saw the changes I made and it trigger it. If I make another change again, you know, it will do the same thing. So, you know, I just want to show you, uh, you see how many jobs I have there. There's not even much, you know, and uh, you see red like this, that means there's a failure somewhere. So if I go to this particular one, which is the one I have um, a bit decent pipeline, this is a pipeline job, you know, again, the first one we did was just a, a, a freestyle job, you know, so you will, I will show you how you can do pipeline as well, something like this. Yeah, for some reason, this will take time. So again, but um, so you see it's, if you go to the workspace again, you know, you see that it copy the content, if I click on the content, you see that it copied the latest content of my of my code. You know, it's uh, so I can perform any action here. I can do so many things. So it's um, so again, this is a very basic pipeline we are doing. Yeah, this is my old pipeline. You see the, all the stages I have here. You know, this is how pipeline works. So whenever I make this is how my pipeline works. Whenever I make a code change to my Git which I link to this particular pipeline and this particular pipeline. It will, be, it will do this stage one, two, three, you know, this is a code analysis, we run test, we do the Docker image, we push the Docker image. I build all these things, you know, with the pipelines a little bit more distant. So then I'm just showing you, you know, this is not what we are 
we're still get, going to get to stuff like this. But, you know, you know, I'm just wanting you to see the, you know, understanding, you know, all this stage will be triggered automatically, it will be triggered, you know, automatically all the way and deploying to GKE's uh, Kubernetes, you know, so it will do everything, run through all the process, one after the other, one after the other. So, you know, and it's the way I build it. If you want to see my configuration, you know, if I go to configure right here, so um, you see what I did, this is my GitHub repo, the same thing, you know, I build every minute, the same thing, but this is where pipeline is a little bit different. You know, you use like a script, you know, which is very, it's not that hard, you know, you, you can, so but this is the script I use for this pipeline, actually to do all the stages, you know, again, we are going to get there and then, yeah. So but I just want to show you how pipeline works and stuff like that. So, and this how my Jenkins, my other Jenkins looks like. Um, I'm not going to go more detail into that. But again, these are just basic job, you know, if we want to create another job, new pipeline, pipeline, I'm not going to create this like that. You know, I select pipeline here, you know, I click okay. You know, um, the same process, but here you need to like add a script. I can do this, try sample hello world. You know, um, again, we are going to do pipeline next class. I don't want you guys to be freaked out about that for now. So they just understand what Jenkins does you know, how it work, how we integrate it with GitHub and any change we make on our GitHub, Jenkins will pick it up automatically and, you know, perform a lot of, a lot of things you want it to do. So yeah, guys, that is, then that is it for today. You know, let's just see anyone have the question. Let me, let me shut down my other server because it's actually costing me some money. Um, you, know, they, you see this T2 small, that's why I'm trying to stop it because they will charge me a little bit. It's not T2 micro. So yeah. they, your T2 micro should be fine to run. Can, I, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I want to ask, so Jenkins, can it only be installed in a, in a Linux environment? No, no, you can install it in Windows, in Mac. Oh, so you, can, you can just go like, you can... Yeah, so yeah, you go, can go to your yeah. web browser and download Jenkins. Yeah, yeah, on that's if you're on your Windows, you know. Okay. But yeah, now it's like okay, we download because it. we wanted to install it in the server, the EC2 server, the Ubuntu server, right? Ubuntu server, exactly. That's why we are going through this process. If you are downloading it on um, Windows, you know, let me see. Um, download Jenkins on Windows. Hmm because some of them doesn't work with Windows. That's what, uh, unfortunately, you okay. know, but I think Jenkins should be able to work with, okay. You see, I think, okay, on Windows, let's click Windows. You see it's downloading now, then I think I can install it. Then if you are installing it, you will, you will have to access it from maybe localhost. Localhost is the name of your computer. You can say localhost 8080, you know, because you, you don't have like a public IP address. So okay. um, I'm sure, okay, I'm on Mac, sorry. So, but yeah, you can check it out, you know, again, okay. The local host is even here, you know, you see, say local host 1818. So, you know, this can be changed by editing this file. So if you want to change it to anything else, um, but yeah, I think you should be able to do that. So you can check it out and, you know, install it on, you know, but those things they are good in cloud environment in the sense that you can scale easily. Like maybe your Jenkins is running too many jobs. You okay. say, okay, oh, I want I want five server to be running my Jenkins. You know, you okay. can do so many flexible things on the cloud compared to when you have it on your local machine and you know you run out of memory. Okay, so okay, so now when your Jenkins is running, is making use of DC2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're making you yeah, we make it use of memory and stuff like that. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we make no, it use of this thing. Yeah, before you know, you can in fact this put the other one I showed you when I was working on that project, because it's a big code. If you if you see the code, it's a it's a it's a lot, you know. Yeah, this or that one. So, so if, uh, if it's in a lot of work, exactly it was, it was building it, then what happened is that. It was building it on my Jenkins server on the EC2 I was using, like okay. this one, this guy. 
you know, you say that it's a, it's a lot of code, you okay. know. So when this thing are built, when, what happens is that when you clone it, Jenkins will clone this repository, we download everything you see here, we okay. download everything. So any action you perform, maybe you running a test here, you're doing everything, Jenkins will be doing it on that machine. So if you okay. do it to some frequently more, like, you know, if you see that my other one, I build a lot of them many times. Okay. Before, before it could work because it took me some time. So it exhausted all my C2 memory and, you know. So you have to scale it to accommodate. The... I didn't scale it. I just log in there. I SSH there. Then I wipe everything up. I deleted because it was building what they call Docker image. It was building all those image and doing every, and one image is like 100 and something megabytes. You know, it was taking so much and I have like 20 of them built already. So at the time I was completely out of memory. So I had to like log in SSH into when my Jenkins server. The switch, yeah. Uh, yeah, then I SSH into my C2, which is running the Jenkins. Then I wipe everything up. Then you can scale too, if you want, you know, you can. In most organization, what they do is that they will have like a Jenkins, they call this Jenkins master. Then there's a way you have like a, they call the other one agents. So agents are like where your Jenkins can run the build. You know, so what happened is that now Jenkins will not be building the image on this machine. We'll be building it on another server, maybe on AWS. Okay. And you can do a lot of very um, uh, interesting configuration there that, okay, you can say my first job, I want it to be building on uh, another server. The Jenkins itself will be running on a separate server, but the okay. build process itself, which can run, on exactly can run okay. another server. And you can scale that server. You, that's all called distributed uh, Jenkins, you know, and it's very cool. And most companies, they use it that way because this way, again, some company like Spencer, your friend, when he showed me their Jenkins, this okay. thing, they have like 80 or more than that, different this thing, like big, big job. They are not this okay. thing. So you can imagine the memory, those one are taken each time you are building a, a, an application or, you know, building a code. And these are the code that you do like maybe 10 times a day. So okay. you know, so they can just have them running on auto scaling group on AWS, the build. So you only just be seen with action here. You do the configuration on the master, you do everything, but the build will be running somewhere else. Yeah, so those are some of the like advanced this thing. Even myself, I've not really worked like that, but I understand how that concept works. And okay. then you know, I can, um, I mean, if I have to do it, if I have a job that requires it, I know how I can navigate my way to do that. So yeah, but those are some of the things you can do on Jenkins. So again, we have our Jenkins running, you know, next week we'll be um, doing, we'll be using a Maven building, build tools. We, we install it, then we integrate it with Jenkins so that Jenkins can use it to build uh, our image. Again, we are going to have a source code I'm going to have a code that we um, provide to you guys that we use then. The code will be in a GitHub repository. You know, we are going to create a new repository, you know, just like a new, you know, give it a name. Then, you know, we have to have that code there, you know. It's not going to be a lot of code like that, but it will be a Java application code. Then we'll be playing around with it with, with Ted Jenkins to pick it up, build it, do many things, you know, deploy it and then, you know, so, yes, guys. So, any question? I know, maybe, I know some of you may be, yeah, maybe overwhelmed with um, a lot of them. But, you know, the main thing I'm just trying to drive out in this is, you know, just get the concept. You know, we still, again, for the next week or two, we'll be on Jenkins doing a lot of things. So, you know, with time you get good ends on it and you know, you'll be able to navigate, you know, you can do things, you know, uh, configure, you can trigger build manually, you know, you can, you know, do a lot of things. You can create a new item, you know, different things. So it's, um, it's, um, it's kind of, the only thing I just feel it should be a little bit to you guys is the, you know, when we are writing the, the the pipeline script, which is the main thing, you know, the pipeline that I show you on my old Jenkins, you know, the script itself, it's um, it's the same task as you know, a little bit it can be throws people off. That's how, I mean, you don't need to cram 
how it is written, you know, I will show you next week, you know, how I write my own, you know, and stuff like that. So depending on what you want to do, you, you know, you can Google it there, you know, you understand it. This is my job. When I started doing, when I started the interview, one of the questions they asked me was Jenkins. I should explain Jenkins, like, okay, how do you create a job from scratch, you know, on Jenkins, you know, and I explain everything because I've done it so many times, you know. So how do you create a pipeline, you know, from this, um, this thing, then I explain that, you know, I went into so much detail that the man interviewed me, told me that, okay, you can stop, you know. So it's, um, you know, once you get good dance on it, it's, um, and it's very key to develop is like, you know, very important. Yeah, this is, this is kind of, that case is still a little bit uh, user-friendly. Some are, uh, very uh, more complicated to use than all this, but again, they follow the same pattern pipeline, you know, stages, 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 build this, that, that. So, you know, um, um, let me stop recording too.